Attention! Although my content is usually family-friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Justice for All is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system, and as such, the videos in this Let's Play may contain blood, mild violence, and or suggestive themes. So, viewer discretion is advised. Haha, <laughs> you fools! We have you in our trap now! Now that you've clicked on this episode of Phoenix Wright Justice for All, you're gonna be so gripped by the storyline you won't be able to stop watching until the end of the Let's Play. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing the evil laugh because I'm not making a single penny off of this. <laughs> hey everybody! <laughs> Artie and Marty are back for more Phoenix Wright Justice for All. Last episode, well, I mean, you already know, because there's no reason why someone would just randomly click... I want to watch episode 31 <laughs> before all the others. Well, someone if you to did, play. please tell me why you made such a horrible mistake and go back and watch all the others. But for those of you who for somehow got amnesia from last time, um, my am might be dead because we didn't get the acquittal in one oh, trial she period. Left. She's fine. March 22nd, 5.24 p.m. It is really late. Yeah. Poor Judge. <laughs> right in company of office. Poor Judge just wants he to go home. He missed his spa day. He just wants to go home and eat dinner with his family. Or he's they, like, Mr. Right Way, you be such yeah, a dog. Mr. Fire! Mr. Fire! <laughs> there, there, Pearls. I, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> but look, it'll be all right. Everything may still work out. The condition was that we had to get a not guilty verdict. And so far, the kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And he won't because Mr. Ongard hasn't been given a guilty sentence yet. <laughs> Cheer up! We don't have time to stand around crying. We have to get going. You're right. Mystic Maya is in much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right. So... Hey, you guys! Glad I caught you, pal! I thought Larry was gonna walk in for a sec! Mr. Scruffy Detective! Oh boy. Looks like Detective Gumshoe has been dubbed Mr. Scruffy Detective in Pearls' book now. It's just plain old Mr. Dick Gumshoe now, and I came to talk to you, pal! But we're kind of busy right now? Talk to him! He's important! The future! The future. <laughs> oh. So, what are you going to do from now on? What do you mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So, do you have a new job lined up yet? Oh, that! Uh, ah, what am I supposed to do now, pal? I, I don't have anything coming in at all till my next paycheck. What, what are you talking about? You don't have another paycheck! <laughs> I guess that means I'm just gonna have to work here at your place, pal. Nice use of the word half. <laughs> so, say what?! You'll be searching for things that will prove Mr. Ongard's innocence all day, right? W well... Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna help you, pal. I've got lots of experience in investigating and watching over people's places. Yeah, and you've also screwed up a lot. <laughs> and I'm great at making really simple meals, pal. I'll take care of it all. Now come on, Mr. Nick. Let's m Mr. Scruffy Detective take care of things. Uh, uh, okay. By the way, what's your best dish? Ramen. Instant noodles, pal. <laughs> Why am I surrounded by people who only eat cheap, unhealthy foods? Hey, Maya bur burgers are not necessarily cheap. You, if you go to, like, the, the high-end place and get, like, the $30 venison burger, like, oh man. No, but, like, there's That's other- expensive. You can buy a more expensive burger than, like, your 25-cent ramen. Oh, yeah, You absolutely. know what I mean? Yeah. That was the first time I've ever seen Mr. Edgeworth act like that. Never thought he'd say something like he didn't care if Miss Andrews killed herself. He said that? That's horrible! But because of him doing that, we got the truth, finally the truth. Miss Andrews' last testimony. I wonder if that was the truth. I'll give you that there was nothing strange in her testimony itself, but I still think there's something fundamentally wrong with the whole thing. You mean about that thing, pal? Why would she want to... No, I mean, almost need to frame Master Ongard. Because... I couldn't figure that out from anything she said all day. Then... Then you're saying that testimony was a lie? Not a lie, per se, it just feels like there's more here than meets the eye. Or that's what Edgeworth would like us to believe. That, that's such a dirty trick! Even that woman prosecutor was better than that! Franziska Von Karma. Speaking of Miss Von Karma, do you have any more information on her condition? Wasn't she shot this morning? 
Miss Von Carter was shot today on the way to the trial by a pistol, pal. B but she's going to be fine, right? I mean, Edgeworth said she was in stable condition, but... Well, she was shot in the shoulder, so she's okay and still hanging in there. They should be done taking the bullet out, so she's probably resting at the hospital. Great, let's go talk to her! Which one? What? Are you going to visit her, pal? Th no. Well, I was kind of thinking about it. Hey! I thought, I thought she was you asking- You actually got a heart, don't you? I thought she, he was asking which one's resting her or the doctors who operated on her. Oh, he's- being <laughs> She looked like she was being tortured to death, not being able to go to the trial today. So maybe it'd be good for you if you went and let her whip you for a bit, pal. Let's go let her whip us, Mr. Nick! No, I'm definitely not going. Um, let's see, the name of the hospital- Oh yeah, the Hottie Clinic. That name sends a chill down my spine. Are you kidding me? Well, I guess I can't hurt to stop by and say hi. Why would she let them operate on her? We already have established that it's kind of bleh. <laughs> kind of? Hey, it's wilting a little. I'll, I'll give it some delicious water, pal. Ah, it's okay. I already did that. The watering can. Where are you, Mr. Watering Can? <laughs> Did he just call the watering can Mr.? That's the exact thing Pearl said in the yeah. earlier one. This is the, um, Nickel Senrai, right? Yeah, that's right. Mr. Nick, please take care of Mystic Maya and be her Nickel Senrai, alright? We already saw that. Yeah, yeah alright. I guess it's just Charlie that changed. Alright. Back to the Honey Clinic! clinic. <laughs> March 22nd. Well, I'm excited to Hottie see her. clinic reception. <laughs> I'm excited to see her, though. It'll be fun. Never thought I'd ever come back to this place. <laughs> yes, uh, are you here to visit a patient? Ah, <laughs> uh, hi. Wait a second! You're... Mm, yes, I'm Director Hattie. <laughs> Why are you still here? <laughs> yes, what is it? Uh, can I help you? You can tell me. <laughs> yes. Director Hottie! Uh, Edgeworth. <laughs> yes, I'm Director Hardy. Ho <laughs> ho. Oh, you're that man from this morning. <laughs> yes. What is it? <laughs> Director Franziska. How is Franziska Vonkana? <laughs> you don't need to worry. Why is he yes. worried about her? She's in good hands. Does he want? Because you see, I'm personally taking good care of her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and that the that surgery, it went well. You have my gratitude. It looks like Edgeworth doesn't know about this director and his secret. She looks so pitiful, absolutely terrified. <laughs> yes, but I understand. <laughs> yes, her opponent was a gun after all. <laughs> and when I snuck up on her real secret, like she would scream really loud. <laughs> yes. I'm guessing she just whipped him. I see. Ah, uh, but she's really cute too. And when I do that, she'd whip me with her whip. <laughs> Boy, did I cry like a baby. <laughs> yes, but uh, I think I could get used to it. <laughs> See, exactly the same. She's fine. Go back to your room. You're so mean. <laughs> so mean, my frisky frisca. But that's good, too. <laughs> okay, okay. I Yes, it's time for my IV drops. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> And what are those tulips doing in your hand, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Ah, I knew I shouldn't have come here. He got her flowers? Yep. That's nice! You know what? Like, <laughs> I know they're kind of enemies, but like, that's really nice gesture. Yeah, the shooting. I was shot in front of the courthouse in my right shoulder. Hmm, it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. No one's- What? Oh <laughs> 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 well, it if happens, it actually does, you it, need to get in the different line. It happens to a Von Carlo a lot. Shot in the shoulder. Shot in the shoulder again. Yeah, at least she got hers removed on the same day. Von Karma waited 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Or Manfred, I suppose. I even had full intentions of running this trial this morning. But, but that would have been too much. Yeah, you looked like you were deathly scared until only a few minutes ago. But I was dragged here by that prosecutor. He even went so far as to grab me by the wrist on the whole way here. It was the only logical course of action given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. Well, good on you, Edward. But with me doing so, I found myself having to clean up after you and that irresponsible deal you made. I think I know what deal he's referring to. Miss Von Karma? You made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you're- what you mean. 
in order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. Ongard, you told Miss Andrews to not okay. testify in court She today. looks like a rabbit with her teeth. She's kind of like got this weird tooth thing. It's like, <laughs> a little bit. It's great. It kind of makes her look like stuck up. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have any proof that I made such a deal? You're denying it? Looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If I had been in court today, this trial would already have been over. All while hiding Miss Andrews' own crime? That isn't my problem, whether she had tampered with evidence or not. I have only one objective, to find Mr. Ongard guilty to murder. The end justifies the means, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The end justifies the means. Miss Von Karma, Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, if you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then Ongard will be found guilty. And what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she's now in danger of being found guilty herself. All because she believed in your words until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. It's true. She would have done that if there was another prosecutor who had, done. like, listed those words. However, I'm almost wondering if she has that specifically with females. Oh, interesting. Because she, like, you know what I mean? She didn't like, latch on to Edgeworth's She didn't words. latch on to Edgeworth's words. She didn't latch on to your words. She didn't latch on to another man's words, particularly. <laughs> she don't need no you know, man! <laughs> but, like, I'm almost wondering if it's, like, that sort of, like, feminine thing comforts her. Or Maybe. if it's like, oh, it's like my She likes mentor. strong female role models. Sure, yeah. yeah like that kind of thing. But you had to know she was... Ow! I think visiting hours here are about over. So, if you'll excuse me. Oh no, I didn't get to present anything to her! Talk What's wrong? It. Why did she suddenly cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had the advantage in that argument. Did you give her the flowers? Edgeworth. Um, maybe she didn't want them. Taste, dude, I'm crutches! <laughs> this patient is undergoing rehabilitation. Wasn't that patient standing in the same spot the last time you came to visit? <laughs> Doesn't look like they've moved any closer to the reception desk. Uh, is this clinic really doing anything? Is that patient really getting better? <laughs> Hey! Don't cut into my monologue like that! I'm explaining things here! <laughs> uh, sorry. Yes. No, sorry. Yes. Uh -huh. that's, <laughs> that's, amazing. So, that's amazing. I've literally never examined that. I've never examined anything in here before. <laughs> in this case. This is the clinic's reception desk, but it doesn't look like there's anyone at the counter. On the wall is this month's word to the wise. Put your best foot forward. Putting this up at a general clinic like this doesn't really mean much, does it? What about the guy in the crutch? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like not moving. <laughs> This must be the waiting area. It's got the feeling of one and there are sofas lined up. But I don't see all that many patients. Mm, yes, well, visiting hours are over, that's why. <laughs> it's time for my nightly consultations to begin. Mine, that is. <laughs> Isn't there anyone keeping an eye on this guy? No. That's really creepy. I wonder where that doorway down there leads to. Oh, that's the x-ray room. <laughs> yes. H how did you know what I was thinking? <laughs> yes, well, it's because that's the x-ray room. <laughs> yes. There's something very peculiar about this guy, because I know it's not me. I think that was exactly the same as it was in Reunion in Turn Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Today's trial. What happened today at the trial, Edgeworth? That was not like you at all. I mean, I know you knew about Miss Andrews' condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far... Ah, but she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, Wright, this courtroom is a garden of judgment. I am putting myself on the line when I stand in there. And that's why I made the witness do the same. It's only natural. Uh, a little too far. Yeah, you definitely did. <laughs> By the way, Edgeworth, you are really angry in court today. That's rare for you. Witness! The card! Give it to me! Hurry! Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This. I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. That card. What in the world is it? You mean this? Listen, right. This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. So, the other day, Edward was telling me about the... I feel like that'll be what's for tomorrow. A special investigations team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. Uh, I understand. 
Their task is to find the owner of this card. Oh. A man called Shelly the Killer. And just as his name states, he is a killer. An assassin. The best at that. Great. An assassin? And we get the picture card added to the court record. So who is this Shelly D. Killer? D. Killer is the name of a long-standing line of assassins. Long-standing? The name first appeared about a hundred years ago, I hear. Shelly is the professional name to the third heir to the D. Killer name. So because his professional name is Shelly, he leaves cards with a shell on them? It's business cards. He has a habit of making sure to leave a card by the body of his victims. Why would he do something like that? We think it is part of his duty to his clients. His duty? If he leaves the card, then his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. It also serves as insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. I see. The killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. It seems that this is one honorable assassin, an assassin with a moral conscience. I guess that even honorable assassins can exist. So you think this assassin, you think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it, wouldn't you agree? Shelly D. Killer, huh? I noticed something at the trial today. You were behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? Tell him! I guess I should just tell okay, him. Okay, why didn't we tell him sooner, now that I think about it? Because he just showed up in court randomly. No, but we saw him before that. Yeah, but Phoenix is also angry at him. Yeah, that's true. Maya, she's been kidnapped. K kidnapped What does the kidnapper want? An acquittal. I see. I have no idea. I will prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. Really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? Mr. Edgeworth is going to- Stop trying to console me, Edgeworth! I don't need your pity. What? Mr. Nick? There's no way you can find her. We don't even have a single clue to go on. There's only one way to save her. I- I have to get an acquittal somehow. It's the only way. Right. Listen, you need to know something. Juan Corrida was killed by Shelly D. Killer. Right. And the client who ordered the job is Matt Ongard. Your own client. Please stop! I can't listen to you. I can't believe that. I can believe it. I mean, <laughs> that would make a lot of sense if he's like, Hey, I don't want to do this dirty work. I want to sleep. Can you go kill this guy <laughs> for me? He did it out of laziness, you think? <laughs> or over busyness. Depending. But he was sleeping the whole time, so... Doesn't explain his lack of a side clock, though. Well, but we didn't... Again, maybe he doesn't consciously know he did it. Again, I think it could be he was blackmailed by, um... De Killer? De Killer. And was like, oh, okay, sure. Or maybe it was Juan who blackmailed him. Oh, okay. I don't know, it could be all kinds of things. I see. Well, if you want to continue your investigation, you will need this. What is it? The hotel right now is restricted <coughs> to police personnel only, as we are looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelley D. Killer. If you take this with you to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. Cool. Letter of introduction added to the court record. In any case, I must attend to the preparations for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again, if anything should happen. Now, if you'll excuse me. Mr. Nick? Do you... Do you think Mr. Ongard hired an assassin? No way. I mean, he doesn't have a cyclone. Y yeah I guess not. Maya. Please. All I ask is you make it home safe and sound. I want to Day and time unknown, and the location is unknown, and we don't know anything. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers can be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me. And even though it, he said he was an assassin, I bet he's just making that up, like how Nick does with everything in court. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maya, for adding a little comedy to this serious situation. Anyway, let's try out the card trick with this card I just found. Sounds like I got the door open. 
Okay, time to go take a look around. We play as Maya! Where are we going? Are we on a ship? I hope. <laughs> Date unknown, time still unknown, location we don't know, we don't get have a clue. <laughs> Wait, what? What the heck? Why did it look like a wine cellar in the basement and a science experiment upstairs? I don't know! Are we going past dimensions? <laughs> what is this place? I've got a feeling I'm not in the hotel anymore. Are those videos over there? Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, I should be looking for clues. That way I can show them to Sis and maybe get out of here. Good on you, Maya. Alright, you got the videos. It's so dark in here, I can barely see, but these kind of feel like videotapes. All of them. Just what kind of room is this? We probably don't want to know that. That's weird. What is a figurine doing on a sofa in a place like this? I think it's a bear. Oh, how cute! That's super weird that there's a bear there and there's all these bears in at Juan's room. room. Yeah. But it's got a lot of cuts and slits. WHERE THE HECK ARE WE?! <laughs> ARE WE IN A HORROR MOVIE?! And there's a lot of... tapes! Yeah. yeah! I wonder if it's some kind of puzzle or something. Maya, you sweet little innocent child. <laughs> you need to get out of here. Oh hey, it's a computer! Maya's older than you are in this. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But... Mm, she's a little dumb right now. I've never really used one before. Um, I have no idea where the power switch on this thing is. Drat! There goes my plan to use this somehow to get out of here. It's probably screened. What is this thing? An antenna, I guess? And this is a VCR. There sure are a lot of electronic gadgets here. But what is an antenna doing here? Probably... Th they run a cable company. No, probably broadcasting. Wow, I've never seen a TV this big before! Now, where's the power button? Don't watch TV! <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Fully! It's busted! I would so die a happy samurai fan if I ever got to see the nickel samurai on a TV like this. Ah! I can't believe I just made a joke about dying, all things considered. There's a framed picture sitting on this coffee table. I'm looking. It's a picture of a woman that is Celeste. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay, she's kind of pretty. <laughs> kind of? <laughs> hey, it looks like something's written here. Let's see. I think it says, with love, Celeste. Dang it! So, she married a serial killing assassin, and then, of course, one die <laughs> because of that, or were lovers at some point. And she was the whole mentor to this girl... Yeah. And everything's yeah. crashing and burning. Oh my gosh. I bet this could be a clue. Right, let's get out of here. Ugh, locked, of course. It doesn't look like I can use the car to open this door. There's a little hole in the bottom of the door. If only I was a little skinnier, then maybe I'd be able to crawl through there. No! How the heck do you climb under a door? Oh, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. It seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is? For now, I would suggest you remain cooperative. If you cannot, there are ways in which I can help you. Ways? You mean... Dead men tell no tales is how the saying goes, correct? It's dead! I'm almost certain I told you on our first meeting, I am an assassin. No way! You're lying! I mean, an assassin? People are not always who they appear to be. Well, uh, let's hope she's not dead. <laughs> March 22nd, 704 people. Whoa, they were in the hospital for a while. <laughs> Hottie yeah. clinic Well, no wonder Juan Carmel left. She's like, two hours with this dude. Can I please leave? <laughs> yeah, You're no making me die here. <laughs> Mr. Nick? Hmm? <coughs> oh, yes, Pearls? I need to get back up to my Pearls voice. Got caught up in my thoughts about Maya's situation. Mr. Edgeworth has left, you know. I guess for now I have no choice but to believe in Mr. Ongard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. Alright, let's get going, too. Okay! You know, Alright, dude, I, I really want to talk to you, man. 
Not you, Gumshoe, sorry. I love how it's 7 p.m., but it's like, it's you know, light it's super light outside. Maybe they're in, like, the North Pole or something. <laughs> March 22nd, Detention Center Visitor's Room. The camera looks different. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Aww! Ah! I have too many questions I need to ask. I I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... You're Mr. Wright, you say? Oh, yeah! There's a message here for you. A message? It's from Matt Ongard. Ah, here you are. Wait, right! Is it something really important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it has to say. To the lawyer dude, I've got something really important to tell you. Why do I feel uneasy all of a sudden? This is gonna be interesting. Oh, Mr. Wright, so actually, I have a favor to ask of you. I have this cat named Chu. I didn't put out a lot of food when I left the house, so he's probably pretty hungry. You think you could drop by my house and feed Chu for me, dude? My house is just a little ways down from the hotel, alright? He's giving us free reign of his house. This is not gonna end well. We're gonna be like, oh, uh, by the way, while we were feeding your cat, we found this knife in your fridge. I don't know. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's we're gonna find knife, something. Dude. Not a butter knife. Like, but we're gonna be like snooping around his house. This is gonna be great. Th this is terrible. Let's hurry. We have to feed his cat. I'm sure poor Shu's stomach is growling by now. Or maybe the mafia will pop up on us. Y yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess the mafia can pop up on us. <laughs> Matt's note jammed into a pocket, dude. A client's request is a request. Guess I should go check up on his cat. That's yes, so you should. I Cats are, are very important. Please feed your cat. <laughs> Picture card was placed next to the victim at the time of the murder. Miss Andrews was carrying it. Letter of introduction received from Ed Jorf allows Bearer to freely investigate the crime scene. Matt's note. Please, Please feed my, my cat, cat shoe. My house is just a little ways down from the hotel. Okay, that's terrible directions. Like, yeah, just go to the hotel. It's pretty close. It's like that. And it's not going to be like Matt on guard's <laughs> house. So. Actually, maybe. Criminal affairs? Oh, criminal affairs. March 22nd, police people. station, criminal affairs department. I just realized, who's now the chief of the police if, um, Gant is... We don't know. <laughs> Toph, time to step up your game. <laughs> I am chief of police. Oh, um, wh what's his face from season one who replaced Lynn? You're officially the worst chief of police ever. Calm down, Cora. I don't remember. I forgot about him. Ryko. No, Ryko. no, that was president. That was that the was... president. <laughs> You remember the name of the president dude with the mustache? He was in three seasons, and the police chief replacement was in, like, two episodes of season one. I forgot about the police chief replacement. <laughs> wow, everyone looks really busy with something or another. Hmm, they're probably strengthening the evidence for tomorrow's trial. Hey, hurry up with that, will ya? Pass that victim's list around. Now they're speaking nonsense. There's more than a hundred people on there. Uh, Mr. Nick... Is Mr. Ongard a really bad, terrible criminal? Actually, Pearls, never mind. It sounds like they're working on a different case. Yeah, if there's a hundred people. <laughs> Holy cow, that's like... That could that's just like be a like terrorist attack. Friends. This must be the chief of the detectives here. He's glued to his computer screen. What?! Prosecutor Von Karma was shot in front of the courthouse?! <laughs> who, who did it?! Who shot her?! I have a sneaking suspicion that even Gumshoe could do this guy's job. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm like, they fired Gumshoe? <laughs> that must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Very well. Now why do you want to work for our company? Well, that would have to be because I feel like I would help this company grow. He must be doing image training for corporate interviews. <laughs> that's a... I would help this company <laughs> grow! such a generic and vague answer. It is really true, though. <laughs> That's well, there's the hotel lobby. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Hotel Lobby. Watch, it's gonna be like, I actually live in the hotel, in that room. That's where <laughs> I live. Oh, I know, Mr. Nick. Let's go look for clues. We have to for Mr. Nick. No, Kyle's we're feeding sake. the cat. You shall not pass! I didn't think I'd hear that. <gasps> Mr. Lundbeg! Don't devalue my name and turn it into a gasp, you spiky hair poof! Because of you, I've been made to look like the bad guy again, although I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy, just as he promised. But I really wanted was something much more valuable. I wanted Edgy Poo's heart. I want it all for me. It's all your fault. You've awakened the wild beast inside this old bag. Ah, Miss Old Bag! Keep your hands off of me! This helmet is airtight. No air gets in and no air gets out. Um... um what does your helmet have to do with anything? Ha! Huh, don't 
think you can get me to move with your silly questions? You're going to have to defeat me if you want to get by! I'm not hearing this. Hey, old bag, I don't care. We got a cat to Airbag, feed. how are you breathing? Airbag? <laughs> Airbag. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean? <laughs> It's Putt Putt! You know what? You, we, can't, we, can't, we can't go on for that. <laughs> let's, go to, let's go to Ogden's living room, man. Airbag. Old bag. <laughs> March 22nd, On Guard Mansion. The living room. Hmm, sure is dark. I'll go turn on a light. No! Bro! Oh, you're good. Never mind. We're good. Wow. So this is what a star's house looks like. Must be nice to be rich. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's find Shu, the kitty cat. Shu! <laughs> Better oh than my missile. gosh! Better than missile. <laughs> he looks like one of our cats. No, he doesn't. <laughs> one of our no longer living cats. No, he doesn't. <laughs> He's orange like that. Not as fat. Our cat was really fat. He's not fluffy at all. Oh, we have one picture. He has that. different colored eyes. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He has green eyes. Those are no. not green. Okay, Those right. are hazel. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. So I guess this is Shu. Oh, look at ugly cat. Hello, Shu. Also, Shu is an amazing name for a cat. Really? I, I think so. I think it's a good name. <laughs> the cat seems to like pearls. Pardon me. What yes! are you doing in his house? <laughs> Wait a minute! Maya's in this house! Yeah, the I, pet door! <laughs> I knew it! Okay. <sighs> you freaked out! Holy cow! I was... Oh my god! Okay, so... Maya's in this house's wine cellar. There's a movie room that nobody's using. This butler is going behind Mr. Ongar's back to keep this girl locked in here. He probably doesn't even know! Yeah, that's the thing! That's the thing! <laughs> I'm guessing... This is the I'm... I'm, I'm I got arrested, he must have been, oh, well, if he got arrested, I guess nobody's using his house. <laughs> no, no, it could be this is his actual butler, dude. Oh, that's, that's what I'm not... saying. It could be his actual butler, and it's like, oh, yeah, dude, this is my main man, Shelly. He's, like, the best butler ever, and you're like, um. <laughs> May I help you with something, mister? Oh, um, we're lawyers. Don't Actually. you recognize his voice? Over the stupid phone call thing? I just realized he might be using a voice changer over the transceiver, oh. and I just... But, okay, we... Except saw... he must turn it off when Maya talks to us through it. Here's the deal, too. We saw him, and it was like, oh, yeah, there's For a like phone... two seconds. No, but yeah. we're like, he's like, oh, there's a phone call from Miss Maya. And then later it was like, oh, no, that dude who got Maya the phone call must be the killer. No, they actually didn't make that connection. Oh, well, they're idiots. Because... Yeah, they are idiots, which is annoying. Uh, we're lawyers. I'm Mr. Ongard's lawyer. The masters. <laughs> then you must be Mr. Wright. Y yes. Weirdo. Ah, it's a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I am the family butler, John Doe. Okay, second <laughs> idea. They are um, John mirror, Doe. <laughs> they are mere twins. John Doe is the best character in the entire series. Okay, no, 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 no. They could be different people, and they're mere twins. <laughs> With stitches in the same place. Yes. Uh, nice to meet you. Oh my dude, gosh. Dude. Hey, dude, I, check it out. I'm a lawyer. I love and hate this at the same time. <laughs> I was wondering if you wouldn't mind taking a look at this. Wouldn't <laughs> Maya hear him be like, She's in the wine <laughs> cellar, so she can't. Oh, you can't hear him. And you know I'm going to have soundproof walls, man, because he likes to watch TV look pretty loud. <laughs> Does he have family? Or is it just like, hey man, this is I'm my more thinking about his neighbors, but yeah. <laughs> this is my I'm afraid I cannot offer up anything special about it. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of evidence for a trial. Oh, yeah? Polite yet snotty with a touch of rude. He's the stereotypical butler, all right? <laughs> yeah. Yo, tell me John about- John Doe. <laughs> um... Tell me about yourself. Would you happen to know who this person is? No, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> it is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master's acquaintances. Then what in the world can I talk to you about? <laughs> Mr. Nick, being angry is bad. Okay, ask about Celeste. Or not. 
No. <laughs> He's gonna say that for everybody, just so you know. Uh, a giant bicycle's flying through the air! That bicycle pearls is one where you don't have to pedal, and it moves on its own. Really? Wow! But sorry to disappoint you, it can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. This isn't Harry Potter. Oh, man. Oh, it's like that couch in Florida that we love, only in oh, purple. Oh, yeah! It's like the, yeah. the L couch. I love my L friends, couches. My friends with that crazy dog I was telling you yeah. about have the same couch, and whenever I go over, the dog always jumps on the couch and lays, like, right in the middle part, like... Well, yeah, that's super And rolls comfy. around. And, yeah. It's a very comfortable and spacious lounge set. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around and have a good time. They don't. In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? Ah, what is with me and feeling inferior today? Hmm? You're wearing a nice suit, Phoenix. You're fine. Oh, there's a giant cooking hearth there. It's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? You know, I've never actually seen a hearth before, come to think of it. You should come and visit Faye Manor, then. I'll show you how and what you do. Apparently I didn't see it, uh, during the second case. Ah, there are masks here! Yeah, that one in the middle is the Steel Samurai. The ones next to it are the Pink Princess and the Evil Magistrate. They fought many battles against the backdrop of Neo-Old Tokyo. I only just realized that the part that, like, Maya was like, Oh, I wish I could fit in here was the cat door. Yeah. I thought she was talking about the underneath the door. I'm like, Maya, if you're too, if you're thin enough to go under that, we need to talk. <laughs> but <laughs> What is she, Gumby? <laughs> Flat Stanley. <laughs> Game and Watch. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you really know a lot about the Steel Samurai, Mr. Nick. I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about that show than a kid. It's partially Maya's fault. Maya probably right. didn't watch it. Well, let's talk it. to John Doe. You must know all sorts of things about Mr. Ongard, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. I just realized, if this works out the way I think it will, this is literally the plot of the first mystery of Guilty Party. Oh, really? Where, yeah, where it's like, I'm the butler, and the butler does everything oh. to kill everybody. Uh, basically, in a, yeah. It and, uh, anything else? No, not especially. <laughs> it is not appropriate for a lowly servant to okay. speak to the master of this all his is, affairs. This is one of, like, two times that I'd be like, I, this could look like someone from our church with a mustache. What? No. The way you're no speaking. No, no, oh, oh, the, the way, way you're speaking. speaking. Plus, tall and thin, take off oh, the mustache. Oh, I yeah. know who you're talking about. But that person doesn't have stitches or a monocle. He could, though. Or he gray hair off. right in the middle. Well, but he's stylish hmm, like how that. How typically butler-like, as it were. Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this residence? Well, sir, I would have to say, maybe about one year. That's it?! And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. Um... It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of himself and his affairs. Why have you only been here for one you No, know, I would have thought Mr. Ongard would have, be the type to have a maid over a butler. Yeah, agreed. Um, part of it, Matt Ongard is only 21, and he's like a star. He probably became a star fairly recently and didn't have enough money for a butler until recently. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, I am surprised that he didn't have someone already before oh, that. Like, maybe he's like, I'm sick of my job at the IT department in this place. I no, want to become a butler. No, but I'm saying, like... Oh my I gosh, I just realized that... my voice frame is absolutely the voice I do. That's what that I'm person. saying. That's why I was like, oh, this sounds like so-and-so. So... As the person was talking about no, what has this voice. <laughs> but it's a little Actually, different. not really. That's not what it's he sounds like at one. all. <laughs> that's not <laughs> what it's Shoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very cute cat you got there. It is my duty to take care of him. The master rather fancies you. Here's the deal. We're gonna meet Matt Ongar and he's gonna be like, uh... What? I don't have a, don't have a butler. And, uh, <laughs> anything else? No, not, not especially. especially. Also, I had never heard someone say not especially before. I, I thought it was hysterical when I was like 12 and yeah. playing this. <laughs> That's why you said that to me so much oh, yeah. when you were growing up. Oh, it is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the family cat. Why not? <laughs> well then, I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. What? Matt's no, note crumpled it. into a ball and thrown away. Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. 
Oh, we should probably get going ourselves. No, let's snoop around. Ah, uh, so young and already so accomplished. A master of law. But there's also a lot to be proud of in being a butler in charge of the house and all. Second thing I was just thinking about. Thank you about. for the compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Yeah, um... Now, if you excuse me. Aww. <laughs> Let's just leave the cat on screen while you're still. So, <laughs> Matt's 21. Yeah. Barely. One year. Yeah. He has his own wine cellar. <laughs> <laughs> That's true! He's Never like, made that connection. He's like, I'm 21. Party man! <laughs> I'm the wine cellar now. <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm like, I'm Thank you so much like, for pointing out that connection like, that um, I made. That's really weird. Actually, Maybe? did we examine the door? I don't think we did. There's a small door at the bottom of this bigger door, Mr. <gasps> Pearl! Pearl! Go in there! Go in there! Go in there! No! Oh, are you crazy? She got kidnapped too! No! But I... Uh, oh, but, uh, I bet it's for Mr. Ongard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe! The door. It's locked tight. Well, I guess that's to keep nosy people like me from entering it. Ah, uh, but if only... If only, if, if only, only the woodpecker signs. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. She cries to the moon and the something, something, you something. You completely got that verse wrong. Anyhow, that's all the time we have for this. She cries to the moon! <laughs> if, only, if only the woodpecker sighs the, that the bark on the tree was as soft as the skies. While the wolf waits below, hungry and lonely, he cries what? to the moon. Yeah, yeah, I, I got that part. Only. Only. Yeah, I just, I just skipped. Like two verses. It's yeah, fine. It's you, fine. Well, you mix two verses together. Anyhow, thanks for watching, everybody. Now you can see the case is getting a lot more intriguing. We've got an assassin who's also a butler with the most uh, unique name ever, John Doe, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we met a cat. So that's cute. Tune in next time. We will be trying to get past Old Bag to the crime scene. That's not gonna be hard. We have a pe we have a letter from Edgeworth. We'll just give it to her, and she'll be like, "Oh, well, in that case." So, so yeah. Hope to see you guys next time for more shenanigans. Until we meet again, have a great day and God bless.